Wizards of the Coast has made the decision to start creating digital-only Magic cards. Now, these cards will only be available on Magic Arena and will never be available in a paper form. This is causing consternation in the Magic the Gathering community. Magic. I am a wizard. History. I'm an old wizard. The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, we are here today to talk about the digital card scenario. And funnily enough, we're a little bit ahead of schedule with this because Wizards of the Coast accidentally announced this plan a few days ago in a brief moment where the announcement that they had created, which was originally supposed to release on the 26th, though basically tomorrow, well, instead, it got released ahead of time. People screenshotted it. So even though Wizards of the Coast went ahead and made it private again, and we'll wait until tomorrow for the official announcement, we have a scenario where everybody already knows we're going to be getting digital-only Magic cards. It's to the point, actually, where people who represent Wizards of the Coast, like Mark Rosewater, are already having to field questions from people about it. And that's no surprise, right? Mark Rosewater is one of the people that Magic players turn to when they have concerns that they want to express or questions that they want to like get clarification on so basically what happened was they asked mark rosewater what's going on with these digital only cards do you think that these are a negative for the game a positive for the game overall this is going to cause problems that kind of a question scenario and the information that was provided indicated that these arena cards that are being created could never exist as physical magic cards. So basically, they're going to be doing ideas that could never really function properly as physical cards. Now, I understand the concerns that people have over these digital cards. So I figure we'll go over some of these concerns and address them so that we're all on the same page. Now, the first concern that people have is cards being available digitally that aren't available physically straight out. Just saying, look, I want access to all magic cards. I don't want to be forced into playing arena to get access to particular magic cards. And if I'm a paper player, then I should be able to get access to all these cards. Now, before Rosewater spoke up and said these are cards that can only be done in a digital fashion, that concern may have felt a little more relevant. But we're talking about magic cards that literally couldn't feasibly exist as physical cards. And I'll actually have an example of a magic card that couldn't feasibly exist a little later in the video to show you just to give you an idea because digital only magic cards aren't really technically a new thing in fact digital only magic cards have existed since the mid 90s and are actually part of one of the best magic the gathering computer games ever made so in terms of being concerned simply about the fact that digital cards exist that you can't use understand they simply wouldn't work in a physical capacity, right? In the past, this is the second time that Wizards of the Coast is creating digital-only cards for Arena, but the previous instance of them doing this was basically them just making filler cards for the intro decks that they give to players on Arena, and there are virtually no truly playable cards in that pile. There may be one card that you theoretically could use in a deck, but still isn't terribly powerful, but there are a bunch of regular cards that were created to be filler, and more importantly, could easily be created as paper magic cards, but the majority of players wouldn't even want most of those cards created in a paper format. So we're not talking about cards like that. We're talking about a complete divergence from that concept and exploring new territory that we couldn't explore otherwise. And so you may have noticed that I have Momir Vig here up on the screen. I wanted to give some examples from Magic the Gathering's past of digital only variant things that they can only really do in a computer game where the game can have access to information that you just can't. So Momir Vig was created on MTGO many, many years ago, basically 
on a whim. They were just like, okay, let's just keep making these different avatars. They're Vanguard cards. So how these work on MTGO is they offer an ability that functionally changes the way that you play Magic. So we would each select a Vanguard card under normal Vanguard circumstances. And that Vanguard would change our loaf, our, our loaf total, the amount of bread you're allowed to have. So it would change your life total and your hand size. You'll notice down here that it says hand plus zero, plus four life. So these are modifiers that change the starting statistics that you have when you play a game of Magic. And on top of that, this grants the ability pay X, discard a card, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of a creature card with converted mana cost X chosen at random. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery and only once each turn. So it's really, really straightforward, but also really difficult to do in physical magic. This is technically something you can do in physical magic. People have created big stacks of binders to emulate it, but it's just not reasonable because what Momir does is he lets you pay you can go I'm gonna pay five mana and use this ability and then what the game does is it literally randomly picks from every single creature that exists in the game of magic that costs five so it takes every creature that has a converted mana cost or I guess new parlance is mana value of five picks one of those at random and you can be at any given casting cost you can be dealing with hundreds or thousands of different cards at that casting cost. So Momir is able to pick one of those randomly and generate a token for you, right? Now this is a cool concept because in essence, it gives you access to all of the creatures that Magic the Gathering have to offer and at the same time, also make it very like a wide varied a large variety of options are available and this concept was so popular that it spawned its own format where instead of you picking your favorite vanguard and me picking my favorite vanguard everybody just uses momir vig and everybody uses a land built out of basic land a deck built out of basic lands so your deck is literally 60 basic lands and all you do each turn is discard a card to create a creature token and it fundamentally changes the way particular creatures work so there are creatures that have abilities that say tap destroy target token creature all of a sudden that card is incredible because it's tap destroy any creature in play and then you have other creatures that say if you didn't cast me from your hand you lose the game well guess what when you make the token from that scenario boom you lose the game so it fundamentally altered the way that magic functioned and added a crazy amount of variety and did something that yes you can technically build a massive amount like a huge chart system where you roll dice to figure out which sub chart you're going on and it's like basically roll all these different dice and generate a random creature so this is technically doable in paper magic but not really feasible in paper magic all right so this is an example of them experimenting and it basically opening up new amazing options for us. And Momir Vig was so incredibly popular that the price of the Vanguard on the secondary market kept climbing upwards to the point where Wizards of the Coast just made the decision to make an automatic include for everybody to have one. And even further than that, if you're somebody who plays Arena, you may recall that they actually brought Momir Vig to Arena as well in a couple of different variations where sometimes they changed up your deck from just being basic lands to having planeswalkers and other stuff in it, which made it a little bit wonkier and I didn't like that as much, but that's just a minor tweak. This is just an example of how getting experimental with concepts can lead to some really interesting things that just can't be done in physical magic, right? So that's one of the concerns that people have. And I know you may be saying, well, look, this is a Vanguard. This doesn't address the digital only card concept. And I have an answer for that, specifically from Chandelar, all right? So if you don't know, Chandelar is a computer game that was created where it's an RPG style adventure. You wander around a map, getting into fights with different enemies, and all the fights are done by playing games of Magic the Gathering. And you get to play for cards, build up your deck. It, had, it has a 
A lot of craziness going on to it. And in all honesty, it's my favorite digital way to play Magic. And I have a playthrough currently going on over on my other channel, Hatcher. So if you'd like to see what Shandalar gameplay is like, I invite you to come over there. In fact, if everything goes well, I'll be doing a live stream over there today where we attack one of the castles of a powerful mage. So that game had its own subset of special cards. They were called... I. Um, they, were they called Celestial Cards? I don't remember the exact name for the subset of cards, but they all have abilities that are impossible to do in physical magic. They all have these crazy, randomized, digital abilities. Some of them, theoretically, you could probably just use a dice. Boom, there you go. All right, we rolled. There's creatures that gain protection from a color when it comes into play, so choosing one of the colors at random wouldn't be that difficult. So I picked a card that really illustrates to you the difficulty of creating the same card in physical magic. So this is Aswan Jaguar, one of the coolest, craziest green cards in Chandelar. It's two green and one for a 2-2. Two, two. When it comes into play, choose a random creature type from those in target opponent's deck. Two green and tap, bury target creature of the chosen type. If you're not familiar with the old school abilities, bury is just destroy without possibility of regeneration. So destroy target creature of the chosen type, it can't be regenerated. So how would you make this work in physical magic? It's not possible without making the game unfair and also adding a level of tedium to the game, right? Basically what would happen is if I sit down and we're about to play a game of magic and I'm trying to use Aswan Jaguar, I have to say to you at the beginning of the game, I'm using Aswan Jaguar and show you the card. Now let me see your deck. And then I have to go through your deck and I have to see every creature type that you have. And then I have to note down every different creature type and create a randomized system. Now what happens if you have if you have something even like, let's say you luck sack and there's only six different creature types in your deck. Okay, roll a six-sided die. What happens if you have 17 different creature types in your deck, right? All of a sudden, how are you supposed to easily determine that? So, it makes it difficult to do the randomization. On top of that, it's unfair if I get to look through your deck before the game because I'm being given additional knowledge, right? So the only thing that would be fair in that case is to let you look fully through my deck, right? That takes away some of the element of surprise for both of us and changes the strategies that we're gonna enact. So that isn't fun off the get-go. Plus, it's very tedious. Having to look through each other's decks and make notes for every game would feel like such a hassle that I wouldn't end up using the cards. And some people would be like that. Some people would have no problem with it, right? And once you've got the list against a certain deck, you can reuse it. But it just opens up the door for a whole bunch of hassle. And this allows this card to be a very interesting card where you don't know what creature type it's going to get to destroy. This isn't an overly powerful card unless you're playing against a straight up tribal deck. If you're just playing one creature type and I land the Jaguar, then that's gonna be a genuine problem for you, right? So, this is an example of the type of card that they could create on Arena and wouldn't be able to create in physical magic, right? Now, overall, is this too powerful for Arena? No, I wouldn't say an effect like this is too powerful. Do I expect them to make game-breaking, insanely powerful cards? I don't know. I don't know what power level they're going to bring the cards in at. So people who are concerned that you can't get the cards in physical, I understand that. You want access to all magic cards, but it's not going to be a scenario where they're going to create these insane dominating tournament level cards just for Arena and have all these paper players left out in the cold, right? It's just, it doesn't stand up to logic. And there's another fear that people have, and that is that Wizards of the Coast are attempting to basically circumvent paper magic, obsolete paper magic, and get everybody playing digital. Well, I don't think that fear is really logical at this point to have. Wizards of the Coast makes the majority of their profits by selling paper magic cards. If they were to discontinue selling paper magic cards, most people aren't going to migrate over to Arena. And out of those that do, there's no guarantee that they would spend even a fraction of what they have. There are over 25,000 different magic cards right now in paper. So if they stopped making paper magic, there's plenty of cards for people to play paper magic with for the rest of their lives. There's no need for them to go ahead and dive into arena. Now, yes, 
there would be some people who would make the leap. They would go from Paper Magic to Arena, but that would be a drop in the bucket compared to what Wizards of the Coast normally makes off of paper. They make a ton of money off of paper. And the cards they're making for Arena, if they could be made physically, Wizards would do it and sell them to us, okay? There's never a situation, with maybe the exception of the reserve list, where Wizards isn't eager to sell us as many cards as possible. Look at what's going on at the end of this year. We're getting two Innistrad sets now instead of one, because Wizards of the Coast feels like the end of the year has too long of a gap without new Magic cards. So if you're concerned that this is going to lead to the end of Paper Magic and people migrating over to Arena, it's not going to happen. And even Wizards of the Coast has realized their dream of Arena being the big go-to location isn't going to happen. They're no longer trying to draw in Arena streamers the way they were before. They've disbanded, basically, the Arena... The official professional Arena League has been disbanded. It's done with. The, the words... The words on the street straight from the company itself is that Arena is never going to be the ultimate magic experience. They know that nothing will ever take the crown from paper magic. So rest assured that even though these digital cards are coming, it is no threat to Magic the Gathering paper. All right? So from my opinion, the concerns about the end of Paper Magic aren't really well-founded, but I can understand people who want to be able to play all of Magic cards and are frustrated with cards that only exist in the digital variation. But I expect they're all going to be in this vein right here where they offer interesting abilities that are just completely unfeasible to track in reality. And I have to admit, after spending some more time mulling it over and realizing the parallel with Chandelar, I got a little more excited about seeing these arena-only digital cards. I want to see what concepts they're experimenting with. Rosewater coming out and saying these are cards that can't be created in paper is what genuinely gives me enthusiasm about it. But like I said about Chandelar, best Magic the, Compu Magic the Gathering computer game ever made. I stream it over on my Hatcher channel, so I'm going to leave a link to the playlist of those streams here at the end of the video for you to check out if you so desire. I should be streaming over there today doing a Castle Crush victory run, so if you want to come and hang out, you're more than welcome. I do other live streams over there on occasion as well, so it's up to you. Anyhow, don't bring your kids. I talk differently over there. I'll put it that way, all right? So thanks for coming by, my friends. Big shout out to all my patrons, and I'll see you all for the next video.